this has been a long time coming. If you've seen my logo or several of my previous videos, you know all about my love for pretzels. Hard pretzels, soft pretzels, Bavarian pretzels, sourdough pretzels, pretzel nuggets, pretzel dogs, I love it all. Even if growing up just outside of Philly has predisposed me to one specific kind of pretzel, actually, it's a little known fact that when we turn 18, Everyone born in Philly or just outside of Philly signs a binding agreement to only officially promote Philly soft pretzels. But, um, confidentially, here, come here. Between you and me, I've even, I've even on occasion had a taste of Joker, the humble pretzel has several possible origin stories. One tale traces them all the way back to the 7th century, where an Italian monk supposedly used them to reward children who memorized their prayers. According to that origin story, when the monk created these preziolas, or little rewards, in 610, he folded the baked strips of dough into the shape of a child crossing its arms in prayer. Another story claims they were invented to bypass Lent, when Christians traditionally abstain from meat, dairy, and eggs, so a simple mixture of water, flour, and salt could pass muster. Food historian William Way's Weaver associates pretzels with Eastern Gaelish or Celtic customs related to harvest knots, spring fertility, the spring equinox, and the Celtic goddess of the Eastern star Serona. Whatever its origins, the pretzel's first visual cameo was over 800 years ago in the Hortus Deliciarum, Compiled by Herod of Landsberg, the Hortus Deliciarum, Latin for Garden of Delights, was also the first encyclopedia edited by a woman. Throughout the Middle Ages and Renaissance, the pretzel became a widely used symbol of piety and prosperity. A prayer book used by Catherine of Cleves in 1440 includes a picture of St. Bartholomew surrounded by pretzels, with the three holes possibly symbolizing the Holy Trinity. Austrian children hung pretzels on Christmas trees in the 16th century, while the baked treats also served as an early version of the Easter egg hunt. In Switzerland, royal couples used pretzels in 1614 to symbolize the bonds of matrimony, a possible origin of the phrase tying the knot. Pretzels have also cameoed in some of history's most dramatic episodes, like in 1510 when Ottoman Turks tried to invade Vienna, Austria by digging tunnels underneath the city's walls and were discovered by monks baking pretzels in the basement. The Austrian emperor rewarded the pretzel bakers by giving them their own coat of arms, with two lions holding up a shield in the shape of a pretzel. And if we go back even further, the pretzel has been an emblem of German bakers and their guilds since the 12th century. And these twisted treats found similar application throughout Europe, like in the Danish Baker's Guild logo. Although no ethnic group in its culture, history, and cuisine has been so closely intertwined with the pretzel as the Germans. In 2003, Pennsylvania Governor Ed Randell declared April 26th as National Pretzel Day to acknowledge the humble little carbs role in the state's history. But as they'd say in that famous Western Germanic language, National Pretzel Day is bupkis compared to the endless pomp and circumstance exalting the pretzel in modern Germany and the surrounding areas. In some parts of Deutschland, the pretzel still acts as a stand-in for the Holy Trinity, while in others it's given out on New Year's for good luck. Luxembourg observes a fascinating ritual on the fourth Sunday in Lent, aka Pretzel Sunday, or Pretzel Sunday. <laughs> We're deprived in the States, we really are. On that solemn day, men offer their sweetheart a pretzel as a token of their affection. If the feelings are mutual, the man receives an Easter egg in return. If not, he'll get an empty basket. And that's the basis for the Luxembourg expression and, forgive my pronunciation, de Kerf Kreen, to be given the basket, meaning to be rejected. The town of Biberach in southern Germany enjoys special Lent pretzels, while Wiedenberg celebrates the pretzel weeks during the carnival season. Osnabrück celebrates the anniversary of the Peace of Westphalia with a hobby horse race for children, after which the participants are given pretzels. And I could go on and on, but then we'd never get to the New World where the next major chapter in the pretzel saga was written. Now, if you've ever seen a Philly sports team on national TV, you probably know that Eastern Pennsylvania is most famous for two foods, the cheesesteak and soft pretzels. 
So it probably won't surprise you to learn that PA is the birthplace of pretzels in America. While it's rumored that pilgrims brought pretzels aboard the Mayflower in 1620, we know for sure that German immigrants, later known as the Pennsylvania Dutch, brought pretzels to PA around about 1710, and one of the state's most profitable industries sprung up from there. In 1861, Julius Sturgis created the first commercial pretzel bakery, and he based it in Littitz, Pennsylvania, and his factory also apparently created the first hard pretzels. Today, the average Philadelphian consumes around 12 pounds of pretzels each year, while the national average is about 2 pounds, and 80% of the pretzels in America are made in Pennsylvania. Of course, it hasn't always been smooth sailing for the twisted treat in America. During Prohibition, as with pretty much every point in history, pretzels found themselves inextricably linked with beer and all manner of liquor and hooch, so it earned itself a certain guilt by association. The arrival of hard pretzels was especially fortuitous, since it coincided with the rise of the saloon after the Civil War. And it just so happens that Germans dominated the Sudsfield world, and they quickly realized that pretzels were a great way to keep customers around longer, and make them thirsty for some good old-fashioned adult beverages. And bars learned that trick so well that they've continued playing it through the present day. By the time of Prohibition, pretzels had become linked with bars and breweries, which had taken to offering a free lunch of sorts with the purchase of one or more drinks, and since the food usually included pretzels, they found themselves in the crosshairs of all manner of teetotalers and abolitionists. Various cities banned the free lunch and the pretzels, but they were always granted a reprieve. In World War I, the snack that become synonymous with Germans suddenly found itself as politically dicey as sauerkraut, which you may recall in a previous video was renamed Liberty Cabbage during the so-called Great War. As a result, pretzels were again jettisoned from bars, but this time when the 18th Amendment was ratified in 1919, it seemed like the fate of the German snack was sealed. But amazingly, pretzels actually thrived in the 20s, partially because of home brews, and as we all know from the rise of organized crime in America, liquor was never all that hard to find, even during Prohibition. And it was also around that time that the pretzel began to distinguish itself as a freestanding snack independent of suds. And while you'll still find pretzels and other salty snacks in bars, they're now one of the most lucrative snacks in America, with the industry worth an estimated $1.2 billion per year. In 1933, the Redding Pretzel Machinery Company created the first automated pretzel machine, and because it fit better on the conveyor belt, the distinctive figure eight style evolved into the form we most associate with Philly soft pretzels today. And even if certain bakeries form the pretzels by hand, most of them still adhere to the traditional figure eight design. Though it's certainly not hard to find more Germanic inspired pretzels, especially in the areas with a larger Pennsylvania Dutch influence. As I explained in a previous video, anyone who grew up in or around Philly in the mid to late 20th century remembers the countless pushcart pretzel vendors hawking their wares on street corners and intersections. And yeah, the personal hygiene of these fine upstanding businessmen wasn't always stellar, but the taste of spit mixed with car exhaust just added to the flavor. These days, the two most popular Philly pretzel chains are actually relative newcomers. Center City Pretzel, which has been family owned and operated since 1981, and Philly Pretzel Factory, which was started by college buddies Dan DeZio and Len Lehman in the Mayfair section of Northeast Philly in 1998. My personal favorite is Mart Pretzel in Cinnamons in New Jersey, which has been serving up pretzels for over 40 years and began life in the Pensalkin Indoor Flea Market, or just the Pensalkin Mart. And I know most of that is Greek to those of you who didn't grow up in the Philly South Jersey area, but it's an important part of local history, like Wawa or pork rolls or, you know, the subject of this video. Thanks for joining me for this special look at the history of one of my all-time favorite snacks. Mmm. As always, be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time.